Well, returning to one of our top stories now out of Washington, the Justice Department says that it will take the Attorney General weeks, not months, to release additional material from the Mueller report. In a letter to Congress, William Barr said the special counsel did not find anyone associated with the Trump campaign coordinated with Russia to influence the 2016 election. Barr also wrote that there was insufficient evidence to show President Trump tried to obstruct the investigation. Republican Virginia Congressman Ben Klein joins me now from Capitol Hill. He's a member of the House Judiciary Committee, and I've got a few questions for you on some of the two big topics of the day, but we're going to start with the Mueller report. You've said that as much of the Mueller report as possible should be made public. Now that we've seen the four pages, the summary from the AG, um, do you still believe that the American people should see as much of the full report as they can? Absolutely, Anne-Marie, and we voted unanimously that the Attorney General should release the entire report. The public deserves to know, $25 million spent, um, no evidence found of Russia collusion. You know, this is a very, very uh, d disturbing uh, that so much was uh, investigated, so much was spent, and, you know, they didn't find a thing. So I'm looking forward to moving on reviewing the full report and letting the American people see just how many of their tax dollars were wasted. You know, the chair of the Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, and others were a little critical of Attorney General Barr because he managed to sort of come to a conclusion about the uh, Mueller report in 48 hours and write the summary. And, you know, Nadler said that he, he has some concerns. Do you share his concerns that he was able to condense this? I mean, we don't know how many pages the Mueller report is, but condense it down in such a short period of time. No, I think that uh, the attorney general put this on a top priority because he understands how important it is to us, how important it is to the American people to get this information immediately. And so he's working overtime to be able to release the entire report to the public as soon as possible. So this whole obstruction of justice issue, uh, it really comes down to the president's intent. That's part of it. You're a former prosecutor. Can the attorney general judge the president's intent, even though the president really never sat down for an interview? He, he answered written questions, but he never sat down for an interview. Well, the prosecutors have to make judgments about uh, how much evidence is there and whether it rises to the level of a chargeable offense. Uh, the attorney general did not find that there was sufficient evidence to proceed with charging obstruction of justice. And so we will see, once the entire report is released, what all that evidence is. He said most of it was already in the public realm currently. And uh, what additional evidence there was and why it did not rise to the level of a chargeable offense. Would you like to see William Barr or even um, Mueller testify in front of the Judici Judiciary Committee? And if they did, what questions would you have for them? Absolutely. I think that's uh, entirely appropriate for the Attorney General or Mr. Mueller to testify before the Judiciary Committee. What I hope is that my colleagues, particularly those on the other side, uh, will take a deep breath because there is uh, too much hot air out there. Too many of my colleagues on the other side uh, still uh, trying to talk about Russia collusion like it's something that ever existed. It, it did not exist. There was no collusion. Uh, the Mueller report found that out. And now uh, we can move on to the other important issues facing this country. So speaking of one of the other important issues, let's talk health care. Uh, the Justice Department is seeking to have the entire, well, entire Affordable Care Act struck down. Now, this is something that essentially the Trump administration tried to do, right? It was supposed to be repeal and replace, but the bill that was voted on was essentially a repeal bill. It did not pass. What's different this time around? Well, I think we're looking at the actual uh, way that the law interacts with the Constitution. Uh, with the lack of a severability clause, uh, the whole law either rises or falls uh, as one piece. And so... Uh, when one part is found to be unconstitutional, the whole law falls. And that was a design of Nancy Pelosi when she helped write the ACA and the Obama White House. Uh, so now that it is uh, all being challenged, if one part is found unconstitutional and some parts have been challenged as unconstitutional, uh, they risk the whole bill, the whole law of falling apart. You know, Congressman, people who were in need of he their health care 
to be covered though. They don't really care who wrote the law and how they wrote it and whether or not if you if you take one piece out there's a domino effect and the whole thing falls apart. All they know is what they're hearing is that the Justice Department is seeking to rip the Affordable Care up, the Affordable Care Act up. What do you say to those people? You know, what is the administration prepared to replace it with to make sure that these people aren't, you know, losing sleep at night about their health care coverage? Uh, this administration has made health care a priority. They are uh, moving in the direction of providing more options and more affordability for consumers. Health care is a priority, especially in my district. Uh, it's rural. It's, uh, it's, uh, the average age is higher. And so uh, folks do need health care in my district. They need more options. They need more affordable options. And hopefully we can get some of these reforms passed and in a bipartisan way to help fill many of the gaps that exist currently. Uh, listen, Congressman, I want to squeeze in one more topic before I know you have to go. Um, you support President Trump's declaration of a national emergency on the southern border. You know, some have argued that it's unconstitutional, that only Congress can appropriate money, right? And the pres it's not the president's role to sort of unilaterally determine how this sort of money should be spent. What, you know, what's your argument in favor of the president, if you're still well, in favor of him? Sure, and the president is uh, using current law that was passed in the 70s, which gives him the ability to declare that national emergency. I would like to tighten up that definition of what an emergency is going forward, but he's uh, able to define what an emergency is currently and under his definition, move money within departments. So he's taking military construction money that's already been appropriated and moving it over to support the military in the construction of a wall. That's uh, under current statute, he has that authority and that's why I voted not to override his veto of that declaration. So, you know, Congressman, many have argued that if you want to call what's happening at the border an emergency, it's sort of almost policy made prior to some of the restrictive policies along the border, but prior to um, this administration choosing to detain people at the border, we weren't seeing this crisis that we're seeing now. How do you respond to that? Well, we do have a rise in the number of families coming to the border. In, in fact, this month, uh, compared to last year, uh, March, is up over 300 percent in the number of families coming to the border. And that's a crisis when you have small children coming to the border, when you have uh, women who are a third of whom are likely to be sexually assaulted in caravans making its way to the border. Uh, you have a humanitarian crisis. You also have a drug crisis. Uh, you also have a human trafficking and sex trafficking crisis. I, I would call it an emergency. I think most of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle think that we need to do something to help address these crises. And uh, that's why we need border security. And I'm pleased that we're moving forward with that. All right, Congressman Ben Klein, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Thank you, Anne-Marie.